Hey guys, so I finally finished it. It's right here. All done. Uh, apart from painting it, I haven't done that. So I thought I'd run through some of the, it's actually, literally a boom box. You can hold that on your shoulder. I wanted to run through, I feel stupid. <clears throat> uh, I wanted to run through some of the stuff inside the box. I know that sounds very technical. Uh, basically, before I, I did a video and it was uh, just sort of a cursory glance at the thing, uh, and I wanted to talk about some of the components inside and how simple it really is, because I actually haven't done a lot. It's sort of like putting things together. But there are a few little uh, modules in there that have been created by someone else and I just bought them and plugged them in. Like the amplifier, the step-down module, the screen. Uh, a lot of it, a lot of the hard parts are already done, really. But I'll talk through a bit of that, but first, you can have a look at uh, what it looks like now. So here it is running off um, a line-in signal. So it's coming from my phone, just using it as an MP3 player. And you see I've selected the line-in bit on the little display you can see that change, using the rotary selector on the top. And when I play music, you get to see the, the spectrum visualizer on the front. It sounds pretty good, it looks pretty good. Now, it also has Bluetooth, so you can select Bluetooth on the display and play music through the phone again uh, and see it on the display too, so it's not very complicated. Now that Bluetooth module uh, that's inside my device is really cheap. I got mine for about 240, 250, £2.50. Uh, this is it here, somewhere there, I'll put it up, uh, and I'll put a link in the description. But it's a dumb device, it's a dumb USB device. Um, you plug it into any USB port that provides 5 volts. I don't know how much uh, current it needs, but it's not a lot, certainly not too much for, for, what my, for my 2000 milliamp battery, so it still lasts around 7 hours. But the, uh, all you have to do is plug power into this and connect via your phone and the pairing code is zero, four zeros and it'll kick out uh, the signal on the 3.5 millimeter jack. Uh, it's really, really simple. I'll show you a little bit of uh, a close up of the box now so you can see where it is. All I've done is just sort of soldered uh, a USB connector, female USB, onto the board, put power in. The rotary selector provides the, uh, the power to the device and then it's ready to go. Now there's also a radio function that uses this little thing here. That's the TEA5676, I think. I get that sort of mixed up, but it is, it's definitely this chip. I'll put a link in the description as to where you can find some tutorials on how to code that up, because it's very, very simple. Um, it's a great little thing. Uh, it's it, literally the size of my thumbnail, and uh, it'll get from around 86 to 108 on FM, I think. I think it differs whether you're in Asia or in Europe or whatever. So check that out because it's really cool. Um, and that's what I'm using to drive um, my radio. So you can see on the display, I know what frequency it's, it's, uh, it's kicking out. I only change the frequency to the radio uh, when the interrupt on that rotary encoder is turned. So, so that there's no weird signal stuff and you're not constantly polling uh, the, the radio chip. Now the radio chip has other functions as well, so it can read whether it's, in, it's getting a stereo signal, it can also disregard any signals that are lower in strength than whatever number you set, and skip to the next station if you want to. So you can have auto-tuning. I haven't chosen that because I just wanted to use my rotary encoder and I can use that encoder for this as well. Uh, I decided to add a little Pong game. I, I accidentally set uh, an extra thing on the rotary selector, so I thought I might as well. And uh, so I'm using the rotary selector as a little joystick. Unfortunately, it's a two player thing, Pong, so I didn't get the other bat moving. Uh, and really, I haven't programmed a winning scenario or a score to it, but it was just a little bit of fun and something you can mess around with with your displays if you want to. Now, speaking of the display, uh, the LED display is driven. Uh, by my Arduino through uh, a couple of shift registers. It's only a 7x7 matrix, so it's not, it's not massive. That's really easy to figure out. There are lots of tutorials online for that. Uh, I've got resistors in line so that it's 
limiting that current going through. Uh, and I'm driving that from, driving that, I keep saying that. What I mean is, the signal it's responding to is coming from the MSG EQ7 chip, which is a little spectrum visualizer chip. Now it's not super accurate or anything, it's only got seven bands and you know it's not it's not amazing. It'd be great if there was one with a lot more bands, but I can't find a chip for that, certainly not one that's cheap. Anyway, this thing cost me, I think it was four pounds from Spark Fun, no Protopix, sorry. Um, it's a great little thing. All we, the, the technical data sheet has all the information in to wire it up. In fact, it's right there. Uh, only a few components are really needed. You'll need some caps and uh, you'll need some resistors. And that's it. You put your signal in and then you get your signal out. Uh, and it's all controlled by two pins on your Arduino. I'm using analog pins and I'm reading the analog symbol coming out again on an analog pin. Uh, I'll put a link in the description as to where you can learn how to do that because all you're doing is strobing this thing, you're polling it for information and it's jumping the bands and figuring out which, which signal to kick out to you. So it's very simple but uh, it's a little bit difficult to implement into your code. So have a look on this example in the, the thing below and uh, you'll learn how to do it. I'm, again, I'm not going to delve into code for this because Mine's sort of highly specialised for my little box because I've got the display, the rotary selector and all of that stuff. Uh, what else is there? Oh, power. Power is another important thing. I'm using six AA batteries. They're rechargeable batteries. Uh, I'm using a step-down converter to make sure the 5 volts is going straight into my Arduino on the 5 volt pin. Uh, the Arduino still regulates 3.3 volts out so that I can use that for the display. Um, but the step down thing is really important to make sure that I'm, own, I'm getting a steady 5 volts. It also means that I can plug a DC jack into there as well because it's 40 volt tolerant, that step down module. Um, it's just a simple one, it looks like this. You can find them all over eBay. Um, and it's a, it's a very useful little thing. It's actually a lot bigger than it needs to be. I could just stick a 5 volt regulator in there. Uh, but I had this thing lying around so I decided to use it. It's variable as well so you can change the voltage coming out. Uh, there's a little potentiometer on there so you can make it so it's 12 volts, 9 volts, whatever you wanted. It's just a really useful little device. Now on the top you can see that I've got the rotary selector, I've got the uh, the rotary encoder, uh, I've got my little Nokia 5110 screen and there's a silver knob there and that's a PAM8403 amplifier and that's driving my two 8 ohm speakers. They're really crap speakers but they sound pretty good inside that box because they're sort of uh, almost fully enclosed. I've left the sides uh, with a small gap because it, sound, it gets rid of all the high-end stuff if you completely enclose them and it didn't sound too good so I sort of left a temporary port there and hopefully I'll just drill a hole in the back or something but I don't know how to calculate the right size, it's a bit difficult. Anyway, that, that Power 8403 was about £2 from eBay. It got, came from China so it's really cheap but you can pick them up in the UK uh, and they're good. They're really, really good. They're better than those uh, LN386, is that what it's called? Um, it sounds a lot better than that. Everything's on board for you. It's got um, a volume dial on there. I've just bought a little knob to put on there. Uh, you can put, uh, you get stereo out and you just put your left and right in. And I'm doing that straight from my, uh, my devices. So they're all going to the same thing through diodes so that there's no feedback going through. Uh, you'll also see a massive power button. Well, switch actually, this thing here. Oh, it's turning it on. Uh, it's got an on off symbol on it. I'm very happy about that. It looks amazing. And it's all encased in this little bit of acrylic that uh, so I had someone made for me. Now, let me just show you these. These are my. Um, oh, this is my original design. Uh, I'll give you a close up, I guess my original design for the thing, so it's pretty close to what I really wanted. It's kind of, kind of almost there. I wanted an off switch away from the display and everything. I wanted the display to be a lot bigger, but I'm quite happy about it. Also, I had USB charging on here. I didn't get around to that. And then I had to design the top, because I knew that I wanted sort of a plastic, so yeah, a lot of drawing went into this. I'd never worked with wood before, so I'm quite happy with the way it came out. It does look a bit shabby, I have to admit. Um, but it works well and it sounds okay, so I'm going to call it a win uh, and move on to other things, I guess. Uh, if there's anything you want to know about the project or if 
you want to make one yourself and you want some advice, whatever, uh, feel free to ask. I'll be happy to answer those questions. Uh, thanks a lot for watching and sort of following me on my little boombox journey. Hopefully there'll be other things in the future.